Oh, ya kui, ya kui. Ya kui a kiama, ya kui a kia chach, ya kui a lani chach, ya kui a miwak chach. Oh, ya kui a shnabak chach. Thank you, Creator, for another day, another uh, uh, moment to be here, be present with y'all today. Uh, my name is Ras Kadi, um, and I come from uh, Makamoma Hilakana. It's uh, in Kaiserville, in English. It's, uh, it's our nation, the two mountains, Makamoma Hilakana. It's the origin of our people, Pomo Nation. And if you follow that river down, it goes into splits. The Russian River, we call the Russian River, we call it Edio. And uh, at, the, at the headwaters, we call it East, or at the headwaters, we call it Edio, and we call the River Isi. It goes all the way out, it splits, and it splits off, and it goes to, it goes to uh, Stewart's Point. And uh, in our language, we call that, we call that Kashaya. And that means uh, the, the people that negotiate with the water. And, we, and if you go up the coast, up the coastline, up, um, up to Habida, the mouth of the river, the mouth of the Garcia River. That's where that's where uh, mother the mother nation is at. If you follow that 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 head back inland, the Garcia River to over to Hoplin, to Shokowa, that's where my other you know my other relatives are at there. Then we got more relatives up up north. We keep going up north up to Clear Lake, in Kalonapo. That's where my grandfather's from, my great grandfather. And so I'm, uh, I represent many different. Uh, Many different uh, the Pomo clans. There's 17 different clans, 17 different uh, Pomo nations, and there's more too. There's more that are that, that are there that are uh, lost villages, lost tribes, uh, destroyed villages, you know, destroyed communities. But uh, there's 17 that are still still alive, still existing, still doing ceremonies, still having roundhouses and things like that. So I'm blessed to to kind of know the the history of this of this land before uh, occupation. Um, and um, all occupations come to an end. Everyone has come to an end. So what what does it look like the day after occupation of the Americas? What does that day look like? We have to we have to figure that out. We have to see you know what that day looks like. How are you gonna, how are we going to feel that day when that day comes? And so, in terms of in terms of uh, you know learning about you know this history, I guess for me it started when I was um, uh, a young man, and I started uh, to 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 unlearn all the things that I had been taught in schools. Um, all Indians are dead, you know. That, uh, I was hearing all these things in school when I was growing up. I was being taught, you know that. Indians are dead, and that, you know the pilgrims and the pilgrims came and saved the Indians, and um, all these different things that were taught. And I remember being in, and during Thanksgiving, I remember being in class, and, 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 and you know, it was like, all right, are you gonna be a pilgrim or an Indian? And I was like, I'm gonna be a pilgrim, man. Forget this Indian stuff, man. Because I was indoctrinated, you know, I was I was taught to believe that my culture was was dead. And then on the weekends, my mom would take me to the ceremonies. And so I was confused. I didn't know. I didn't know if, if, if we were dead or alive. I thought I was dancing around with spirits because at school they were telling me we were all dead. And so it took me a while to figure it out. So I finally, I finally unlearned it all. You know, I learned the miseducation when I, when I when I became a young man. I started to started to do more ceremony and do more work in, in the community. And I started to 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 to, to get clear. When I got clear, I began to to listen to the elders and their stories, and I could hear them hear them talk and hear their pain, hear their suffering, and, and, and take a moment to, to remember those stories. And my grandfather, um, his name is uh, Alfred Elgin. He's a he's a long time um, community worker. Not too many people know about him because he's, he he doesn't really uh, put himself out as a, a leader or a speaker or anything like that. He's a reverend. And um, so one day I asked him, I said, Grandpa, why come you, why did you, why did you become a reverend, you know? How come you're a reverend? You know, why do you, why do you go around these churches and he's always, he's always doing the eulogy at the funeral, he's always, the, the, you know, the guy that gets called upon when they need someone to pray, you know, or do a Christian revival, he's always the one leading it. And I said, Grandpa, why, you, why did you do that, you know? And he said, you know, I didn't have a choice. He said, the, 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 
Donatieros, the Spanish conquistadors and the, and the missionaries came into the villages and they came into our village here in Lacamoma Hilacano, which is about an hour uh, north of here. Many of you have probably seen the River Rock Casino signs, River Rock Casino buses. That's our casino, uh, Dry Creek Rancheria. Um, but the, in our language, we call it Macamoma Hilacano. And so that was, that was kind of the, uh, the uh, <clears throat> that was the place where my, where my uh, great grandparents were from. And he told me the story that the you know the, the these uh, during during the early 1900s the the um, the uh, missionaries came in and basically told my, my great grandparents you know to convert or die convert to Christianity or Catholicism or we're just going to kill you right now and that was uh, that was the uh, I guess that was kind of like kind of like what we're seeing today democracy at the at the barrel of a gun right. Like we're, yeah, we're gonna give, we're gonna deliver you unto democracy, as opposed to like you can choose this thing. And so my grandfather told me, you know, you, you have a right to choose. You know, you have a right to choose your generation. This is the first generation that has the right to choose whether you want to be Christian, Muslim, whatever you want. You have the right to choose, but I didn't have that right, so I became a Christian. I became a reverend. 